What's up guys, I am Ian, welcome back to the channel, and today, I forgot what it's called. Today I'm gonna to be doing my first ever reactions with a review. And we're gonna be continuing with the same series that I started on this channel, F1 Drive to Survive on Netflix. We are now on season three. So, without further ado, let's get started on the season premiere, shall we? Okay. Right, mate. Here you are, I can do this. Talk to season three to get a board. Very professional, we haven't done that before. Roll cameras. Oh, there's, a, there's a shot right now of Hamilton. It's the first shot of him in the BTS. This is the first time you actually get to see like the overhead rig of, it looks like two mics. You can see it, there's three seamless backdrops around him, but the only like probably backdrop is the one that's actually behind him. The other two are most likely negative fills. So there's no light bouncing. Roll cameras. Oh, shit, that's bright. Ooh, camera on the slate. JL Schuler, I know you. Oh, it's, ah, oh, it's just such a good intro. It, it never ceases to amaze me. Every episode, it's just so clean. Gotta have my margarita. Apparently, if you drink Corona, it builds your immune. Oh, but we're not even four and a half minutes into the season premiere, and there's already the first COVID joke. These jokes did not age well. All right, guys, all of you guys find your marks. You'll see them written right here. Please find That's your so and awesome to actually hear the director, like, like giving the direction to to not actors but the people in a docu-series. These are race car drivers. These are the faces of some of the multi-billion dollar companies. So Lauren is gonna do a couple of pullbacks between the center of all of you guys. He, he's giving them direction like they're actors and they all are understanding him. It just gives this insight to the power of what a good director can do. What we want you guys to do in this moment, really picture your goals for this year and what you're attempting to accomplish this year. Because a good director needs to be able to communicate effectively. And that, that was powerful. I do obviously wonder how many takes it took to get this shot, but it was still good nonetheless. And they have just three days each to get to grips. The, the drivers, don't even get to be in the cars really like for practice and and anything like that until you know practice time happens like the the practice weekend and they only get three get days grips with the car that they hope will be taking them to race victories and potentially world championship glory these teams have been engineering designing piecing together fixing and, and redoing everything and the drivers only have three days to get used to it. That is how good these drivers have to be, that they have to get in tune and in sync with their car that fast. And for the drivers, it's a huge challenge. It's worth remembering that there are the rules. You have to design and build your own car. So I didn't actually know teams had to, by law, design and build their own car. Now the closer that car is to one that's gone before. So this is gonna be really interesting to see how point racing deals with it, like what's gonna happen with their car. I'm actually very intrigued by this. As to whether that's entirely fair, and most of all, whether it's legal. Okay, so season three premiere. Being in 2021, it's, you want so badly to just forget about everything that was 2020. Trump, violence, racism, prejudice, insurrection, coronavirus, massive death. You, you kind of just want to forget about everything that was 2020. Watching this and having to remember everything that just went on just last year is hard because you, you remember so clearly everything that you went through and how similar it was of a thought process 
in your home and how divided everything was. It's a hard place to willingly put yourself back into and watching season three premiere definitely put me back into that. Right off the bat, McLaren had the fastest lap at practice. Uh, it was Norris, the driver. That was awesome because they came in, I think, fourth overall in the 2019 season. So great first stop. To be followed literally right after by Point Racing, who then came in first. However, their car was eerily similar to the look of the Mercedes car that had just dominated in 2019. So then we get to... Australia to Melbourne. It's like the second week of March in 2020. And at this point, other sports have already canceled more or less their seasons as a whole. The Grand Prix was still pushing. And on top of that, even though other sports had already been like fully canceled, no one was wearing a face mask, at least day one. But then there were a few guys from McLaren who were sitting at a table together. It's kind of uh, polarizing when no one's wearing a face mask and yet one of the guys is literally saying, oh yeah, the team and administration is doing everything that they can in their power to make the entire situation as safe as possible. Kind of polarizing there. And honestly, everything just spiraled downhill within like what seemed like 24 hours. It could have been a little longer, but everything spiraled downhill so fast in Australia for the entire F1 community. They were essentially getting updates every other minute. What's happening with COVID? What's happening around the world? US just closed its borders. NBA season is kaput for the rest of the year. And the entire thing was canceled. Now the one truly positive thing about the series premiere, thankfully, Lewis Hamilton. As the reigning champion of, at this point, I think six years in a row, he has the voice, power, the name, the face, and the prestige to be able to be outspoken against what was happening, against the FIA and Formula One. He was very outspoken about the way they were handling it and the fact that the race was continuing and very few safety measures were actually getting put into place. It's not that he was outspoken and hating it, he was outspoken in his shock value. And that was huge. Someone in that position could very easily have just played it super diplomatic and been very vague and said the FIA and F1 and all those other administrations were doing the best they ever could. And he didn't. He used his name and face and power and prestige to say, no, I, I don't understand why we're actually here. And for him doing that, I commend him. I applaud him. I admire him for doing that. And I will continue to for this forevermore. And that's all we got for today, guys. So thank you for sticking around and for checking out my first ever reaction with a review. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts if you were able to watch this uh, first episode of season three of Drive to Survive on Netflix. And if not, no worries. All three seasons are on Netflix so that you can, you know, catch up to speed. Until the next time, I'll catch you later.